Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Norville, bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. St. Lucians are encouraged to embrace innovation to realize greater productivity in the workplace. Media workers are enlisted as partners in the national thrust towards achieving international standards. An urgent appeal is being made for breast cancer screening during this Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And the National Wule Laba Competition excites Creole Heritage Month celebrations. The government of St. Lucia, in collaboration with the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, the NCPC, has officially launched Productivity Awareness Week 2018. The theme for this year's observance is Innovation for Greater Productivity. In its quest to relate the theme to economic well-being of the nation, the NCPC has ensured that the activities marking the observance will highlight not only how innovation can lead to greater productivity, but also how ordinary St. Lucians can be part of that process. Lisa Joseph guides us through that roadmap. The fifth annual Productivity Awareness Week is being hosted under the theme Innovation for Greater Productivity. A key factor in increasing the performance of a business or organization is innovation. It is with innovation that entities are able to improve output and efficiency with less effort and cost. Therefore, business cannot have sustained productivity without constantly innovating. It is with that in mind, the newly appointed chairman of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Jared Begas, indicated that the council will be working with the Department of Education and Innovation to develop an innovation policy. We will seek to deliver on those things that most impact national competitiveness and productivity first. In keeping with our theme and our recognition of the importance of innovation, we intend to work closely with the Department of Education and Innovation to formulate an innovation policy that will seek to address how we promote innovation in a holistic way. The activities slated for the week's observance will focus on innovative practices such as fintech, research for productivity, adaptation of new technologies and creative ways of solving daily problems in customer service. Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Department of Education and Innovation, Michelle Charles, indicated that Senusians should take advantage of the orange economy, which will in turn lead to economic growth. To give you a sense of how immense the opportunities are and how great the scope is within the orange economy, Philip Butrago wrote, it is, If the orange economy were a product, it would have the fifth greatest volume of business in the world. If it were a country, it would be the fourth economic power with a GDP of $4.3 billion and 144 million workers. And so, ladies and gentlemen, St. Lucia is poised to be active and reap the benefits that redound from orange economic activities. We may be tiny, but size is no prerequisite for investment in promoting curiosity and facilitating creativity. The Council is collaborating with many agencies on the initiative, including the Government of St. Lucia, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, First Citizens and Bank of St. Lucia, in displaying innovative projects and services at the Financial Administration Centre during Productivity Week, which ends on the 19th of October. From the Government Information Service, I am Lisa Joseph. On the heels of the launch of Productivity Week, the government of St. Lucia is making strides towards increasing productivity and improving the ease of doing business. Department of Commerce's Director of Investment, Nancy Francis, explains that the government of St. Lucia has embraced a government. It was a very exciting time for me to register for the service offered by the Accountant General Department, the, where you can get your pay slips online, because before that, you had to go to the accounts department to get your pay slips, and sometimes it will take a, a it will take a while. But now you have it at your fingertips, and you can make decisions on your system, on your computer. If you go to the bank for a loan and they request your pay slip, you can just log on and print and give it to them. So it is a very innovative idea to have the pay slip online. 
E-government is the use of information and communication technologies known as ICTs to improve the activities of public sector organizations. The Director of Investment says the shift will provide benefits to the public and business entities. Any service that you offer online, it, it gives the users other avenue to get access to the information. So for example, instead of leaving your office to come to the Department of Commerce to get an import license, you can do it online. You can sit at your desk and do the, app, the application process. Everything is facilitated online. So we are moving to the e-era. We are giving our customers options so they can make decisions. And it is a very exciting time for government as we seek to make it easier to do business. E-government offers an increased portfolio of public services to citizens in an efficient and cost-effective manner. It also allows for government transparency because it facilitates the filtering of information to the public about what the government is working on as well as the policies for implementation. The thrust toward increased productivity through innovation dovetails with efforts at achieving international standards in various sectors. On October 14, 2018, St. Lucia joined the international community in observing World Standards Day. Anissa Antoine has the details on St. Lucia's activities. The St. Lucia Bureau of Standards is responsible for the promotion of standards in relation to goods, services, processes and practices produced locally in order to improve the quality of life in St. Lucia. As part of the activities to commemorate World Standards Day, the Bureau has organized a number of activities to sensitize the public on the role of standards in facilitating trade, health and safety of consumers, and ensuring suppliers meet required standards. Vern Emanuel is the director of the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. We are in a more technological and information driven age where the rate of information transfer is increasing and we have to be more responsive and adaptive to the increasing demands of international trade, of trade facilitation and ensuring that the well-being of the public is protected while facilitating a vibrant economic environment. In an address to mark the occasion, Minister with Responsibility for Commerce Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Bradley Felix, stated that St. Lucia will benefit as it takes up the challenge of confronting the fourth industrial revolution. According to him, international standards are also a powerful way to ensure safety and minimize risks. For example, security standards can keep our data safe and deter hackers. And safety standards for robots will make it easier to interact with humans. International standards provide a platform for ensuring interoperability which encourages investment and supports innovation. Moreover, the ongoing work of the International Organization of Standardization on innovation management will offer tried and tested frameworks that help organizations unleash their innovative potential. International standards are visible in almost every aspect of daily life with standards on air, water and soil quality, and environmental aspects of products, they protect the health of the planet and the people beyond bringing economic benefits. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is Nation Beat coming up, the National Wule Laba Competition excites Creole Heritage Month celebrations. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. Distinguished citizens who have built on the legacy of the University of the West Indies were honored with the Pelican Award on Saturday, 13th October, in a special ceremony. The University of the West Indies Alumni Association on Saturday honored a number of graduates with Pelican Awards. 
The Pelican Award is given to a graduate of the UE who has contributed greatly to the development of the university or has contributed to the Caribbean. UE's Pro Vice Chancellor and Principal Dr. Lers Longsworth said the feat speaks not only on the individual's hard work but the quality of the tertiary institution. The, a university is all about the people who make up the university. It's not just buildings or programs. It's about those persons who pass through the walls of the university and how they serve the university. So what it, we did tonight was really to honor the persons who have passed through the walls of the university, who have gone back to their countries, come back to the region and have served and served very, very well. It's important to recognize the greatness of our graduates because it's also a reflection on what the university has done to transform our societies and to move our region forward. Director General of the OECS, His Excellency Dr. Didikas Jules, was one of the awardees. Dr. Jules expressed his gratitude having received the award and highlighted his long-standing relationship with the institution. I said I'm very humbled by this award because uh, the other awardees are persons who have achieved really spectacular achievements in the, in the course of, of their post-university life. Um, I have been engaged with UE for a very long time. Um, I, as I recall, I was 22 years old at the time of the Grenada Revolution when I was permanent secretary for education and sat on UE council. So I've been engaged at you know, significant decision-making levels in the university for some time. And we've always fought consistently to maintain the regional character of the university and to ensure that the university really answers the needs of Caribbean society. The award ceremony was held on Saturday at the Bay Gardens Beach Resort and Spa. From the Government Information Service, I am Anissa Antoine reporting. The cancer care specialist with the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Owen Gabriel, encourages women, particularly during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, to get screened for breast cancer. He supports the use of mammograms as the best screening method for detecting early signs of breast cancer. Early detection of cancer provides the best opportunity to stop its spread, while providing an opportunity for early treatment of the disease. Consultant oncologist with the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Dr. Owen Gabriel, continues to advocate for regular breast examination for increased protection. Well, I'm so happy that we actually here with this mammography machine here because over the years we've not had access to a mammogram machine in the public sector. And this is now an opportunity for women in St. Lucia and um, young and old to use this machine for prevention and control of breast cancer. We know that breast cancer is, is treatable if we diagnose early. So early detection is, is one of the things that will help us treat somebody and cure somebody if they have breast cancer. Screening mammograms have been shown to be useful in reducing the incidence and prevalence of breast cancer. He advised women that though there is a slight degree of discomfort, as with many other procedures in medicine, the tests are completely safe and necessary. However, we understand that once you're able to do this, in a normal frequency, as determined by your healthcare provider, that there are no harmful effects at, at all. Um, some people are concerned about radiation exposure, but we know that un, only, only unnecessary or excess uh, exposure will lead to problems. This mammogram machine is safe, and I can guarantee that every woman who uses it properly with the kind of frequency once a year or once every two years you do your mammogram machine, there will be no harmful effects in the long run. Dr. Gabriel referenced the unfortunate downside to not performing regular breast examinations. The majority of women who do not participate in screening and early diagnosis techniques and, in, and procedures end up presenting in very late stages where you have breast cancers that are, look like tumors and sores on the breast and at that time it's harder to cure these women and they go through a lot of pain um, throughout, throughout their treatment plan because they've, they've not participated in screening and early diagnosis using a mammogram or breast self-examination. He said women and men should follow three main tips during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Get educated with the right health education about the disease. Do regular screening, particularly if you are at risk for a disease such as cancer.
And finally, early diagnosis by doing things, and, and in this case it is breast self-examination, so that you can identify a lump as early as possible, and then you can see your healthcare provider uh, who will administer the right treatment. The theme for this year's Breast Cancer Awareness Month is Be a Breast Friend, Early Detection for Improved Protection. For the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Glenn Simon reporting. Activities celebrating Creole Heritage Month kicked into high gear Sunday 14th October with the hosting of the National Wule Laba Competition at Marshall. Anisia Antoine has the details. Every year St. Lucians look forward to the month of October to not only learn about St. Lucia's culture but to keep St. Lucian traditions alive. As part of the thrust, the Cultural Development Foundation held the National Wule Laba Competition at the Marsha Grounds. The Minister for Local Government and Culture, Senator Fortuna Bell Rose, commented on the significance of the location. Over the years, the last 30, 40, 50 years, and even beyond that, Marsha has been a very strong sporting community. And you could see that today by the response, um, even of the athletes who represented Marsha, good playing um, of the Wallaba game. Um, I think for us, what this would do in the community is continue to build the capacity of the people, build on the confidence level, um, making, letting them know that they are capable of delivering, not only on the field of play, but even off in terms of the organization of the event. Wule Laba is a local version of cricket that is most popular in rural communities. The Wule Laba competition is the third event on the calendar of activities for Arts and Creole Heritage Month. Hilary Lafosse is the director of the Folk Research Center. Today, the Wule Laba, which has been organized every year, but this year we try to have one festival. Normally we'd be having games, teams against teams, over a period of about two months. But we thought that we should have one festival this year and go to the Marshall Grounds, one of the best grounds in the country, and uh, to also have the people from Castries and the surrounding areas to come and view our indigenous game of, of cricket at Wuli Laba. The next item for Creole Heritage Month, La Wen Creole, will be held at the National Cultural Center on the 20th of October. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. That's a nation beat. Join us next time as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.